on with our uh, build feature here. We're going to go into our pedal and steering uh, mounts today. So it's an automatic car, but we're uh, we're still going to use our uh, adjustable pedal kit and our adjustable steering column uh, set. We've uh, we featured that in a couple other videos, but this is the first time we're going to actually show it installed on the car. So um, you can see the uh, the kind of unique part of this adjustable kit is this rail feature and these uh, these movable blocks with bearings in them. So uh, this is a pretty big driver. So we've got the pedals pushed uh, a little far forward where uh, where he is comfortable with them because we fit him in the car already. Um, but you can see even that we've got room to move uh, forward or back. So it's a really nice feature because uh, if this car gets sold later on or a different driver gets in it, uh, within an hour you can uh, adjust these pedals and uh, get the guy comfortable so he can uh, uh, feasibly use everything. And um, So this has just got a brake pedal in it and uh, the, the rail system also is on the right side here is going to incorporate the uh, the pedal stop and you can see this is our naturally aspirated pedal stop here so this all moves in conjunction with uh, the brake and the gas pedal so the gas pedal can be moved separately and uh, this stop can be adjusted up and down to accommodate the height of your uh, of your foot so this particular driver, if you watch the uh, Fitment video, he's got like a 14 shoe, so this pedal's up a little higher than normal. But um, this is how that adjustable uh, kit goes in. You can see the floor pan is already in uh, this portion of the car. Um, master cylinder's mounted, and uh, the gas pedal has also got the same type of system up here. And you can see this rail here is going to accommodate the, the gas pedal to move um, front to back. And then we've also got a nice little micro switch mount here that adapts onto the inside of this gas pedal mount. And with that, this bracket moves with the gas pedal mount, but the switch can move back and forth. So you can see these uh, incremental holes in here that moves this tab along with it so you can get the micro switch set exactly where you want. And then we've just uh, added on a little uh, chrome molly tab here. So when you go down with the throttle, it's gonna hit that. So you can see that if I push this down, you can hear the switch click and then go on to the stop. So this uh, pedal will end up about in this position in idle mode. And then when it goes all the way down, it's going to click that switch and then hit this stop. So this is all very nice uh, little package. You can see we've just bent a little half inch tube here to fit between the upper uh, mid plate support tube and the steering column mount. And we've also incorporated the adjustable steering column mounts in this car. So we've got these taped up, but um, you can kind of see these two aluminum blocks are underneath of the tape. And uh, the tabs that come with it have a, um, have a three position hole in it. And what you can do is pull this bolt out and move that up and down either on both ends or at one end only depending on where you want to end up. But it's really nice because it uh, doesn't take much movement here to move the steering wheel a lot because we've got a um, steering uh, column extension tube uh, that's going to go on the back side of this. So one hole here will actually move the steering wheel uh, about an inch on the end. So if you just wanted to go from one position to the next, you're going to gain uh, an inch of travel back at the steering wheel. So these are really nice because this will allow us uh, to get the car completely done. And even though this driver's been fit, when he gets finished, if he wants to tweak it just a little bit, maybe move the pedals back a half inch or move the steering column up an inch or, or just change it just slightly, he has the ability to do that without any cutting and grinding. So uh, this is a really nice system and we've been uh, selling this for, for about a year now and they're very, very popular. Mm -hmm. And it just makes the car more valuable because uh, down the road you can sell this car to a different size driver and he can easily adapt it to him within a couple of uh, the 30 40 minutes he can be set up for his uh, size and and steering wheel preferences and he's good to go so really a valuable uh, option to have so that kit's all done and mounted that's how that's going to end up and then we're going to roll down here to the uh, master cylinder mount and this is our standard uh, master cylinder mount kit and uh, this uh, this is the this is a Chrysler type master cylinder that we use and and you can see this uh, this laser cut tab is mounted to the fr uh, to the main frame rail and then uh, we've got the the stop that goes on the back side here that's cut down and it's got a little machine bolt that centers up in the 
back of the master cylinder. So it really doesn't take much to mount this. So you just got to hold the front of it and really all the load goes through this little bolt on the back. So when you push down on the brake pedal, you're basically pushing the master cylinder back and forth. So this, the head of this bolt is machined at a, to a point so that it centers up in the uh, countersunk that, that is already in the back of this master cylinder. So real quick to mount, the kit comes with this tube and this little support and this bolt and a jam nut and this plate. So uh, very simple kit to mount, very clean mount. We like to mount these up here in front of the, of the pedals uh, beside the engine here. It's a very good location. I just don't like them back in the middle of the floor. You see a lot of uh, master cylinders mounted in the uh, center of the floor pan here. And when you're getting in and out of the car, you're constantly stepping on top of the, of the the master cylinder fill and the caps and it's right in the way and when you get out of the car you're stepping on it and it's, it's just kind of a pain in the ass it's it's up here um, in front of the firewall it's out of the way and it's a very easy to get to to put fluid in it and just a, kind of a nice spot so uh, that's all done and uh, we are ready to roll on to the other side of the car this is the uh, this is a delay box mount. Now, this is a custom mount. We don't really have a kit for this because everyone's a little different, but this is how we mount it and the location that we mount it in. So you can see there was some stuff we had to work around. This car's going to have a 632 in it with a couple stages of nitrous. So we've got these nitrous valves here that we need to accommodate. This is a nice location for that because the this car's going to have a full tunnel in it. So it'll have a full carbon tunnel enclosed in the transmission and the drive shaft enclosure. So we want the driver to be able to reach under this. Um, delay box from that side of the car and push these valves open. So um, that's why this is up a little higher and we've kind of tilted this back and aimed it right at him so he can easily see this. So this mount, like I said, is a custom piece we made, but it's got a couple little sleeves in this tube here, which is our uh, four link support tube. So that can slip in and out. So when we're done, the wiring uh, for this will come on off of this side and we'll have a little uh, wiring harness that comes down this tube and it'll run over here to this area in the car where a lot of the, the grid and, the, and the, um, the spark amplifier and stuff are going to be mounted. But it'll, that'll be a loose kind of a, uh, it's in a, in a uh, like a shrink type tubing. But we won't fasten that down, so when you want to work on the uh, transmission or, or anything in the center of the car, you can pull these little hairpin clips out, and then this will just slip out of there, and then you can lay it over here out of the way, and it'll still be connected uh, with the wire, so you don't have to disconnect any wires or anything. So we try to make it where you can slip that out, get that over here out of your way, pull some pins, uh, knock the drive shaft out of it, the transmission's ready to come out. So this is a nice little mount, but unfortunately it's, it's kind of custom built per car. But this is how we would mount this on a single frame rail or a double frame rail car. It mounts exactly the same. So that's all done. Um, and then uh, we have finished up some of this stuff in, in, in the earlier videos. I showed you where this location uh, was, but we have this all finished up now. So this shows the, uh, the dual fire bottle handle kit. So the handle's now mounted. Um, these rods are extending back so we can put the cables back here at the back and uh, that gets the, the cable back far enough away so that this can easily work nice and smooth. So these, uh, these aluminum uh, uh, tubes are threaded on both ends so they're threaded in here where the cable hookup is and then they're threaded these little rod in. So as you use this you can see that this is just going to pull out and those cables will come fully out of there. So when you know when you have a fire you're not going to be um, want to search around for the handle so we make it here kind of convenient to put back in so that it's easy to get to so so basically when you're sitting in the car you can just slide your hand up and uh, I'm gonna walk around there and show you how that works so I'm gonna be sitting in here kind of like this we got the seat out of the car but uh, you can see the shifter and everything is, is easy to get to and along with the delay box mount so this is all easy access but the fire bottle handle I was talking about here, is so this thing is on fire. It's either had a nitrous explosion or something, something that's caused a fire, fuel leak, whatever. You don't want to have to look around. If you, if you look in a lot of these cars, the fire bottle handle is mounted in the re most remote place. And a lot of times they don't take into consideration how it needs to operate. Like you'll see handles mounted up here on this tube that are, that are pull or they're push and they're mounted this way. Well, there's no way to get up here and to grab a handle and like pull it forward or push it back this way. So it, nobody takes into the, the thought that when this is happening, 
there's smoke in the car, there's, there's the windshield's burning out of it, you're running 180 mile an hour, however fast it is. You don't have time to search around and try to figure out how the fire bottle handle works. So we try to put it in a convenient spot so that I don't have to think about it. I can, ha I can have my hand on the wheel, I got my foot on the brake, I'm trying to see where I'm going. I'm just gonna reach over here and this is right here. So I can just reach up, I can hit my hand here on the funny car cage and just slide it up. I don't have to look at it. I don't have to think, okay, where is it at? I just gotta do this. And when I do that, I just got to do this and that. Now my fire bottles are, are exhausting their contents. I don't have to like look around and try to figure out where it is. It's just right here. It's easy. I can hit my hand over here, slide it up. You're going to have gloves on. A lot of times you'll see these things mounted real close to a tube where you can't get your hand in between there. Or it's mounted up here and it's pushed and you'd have to push it this way. I mean, it's ridiculous. Well. Hopefully you don't have a fire, but when you do, you're going to need to know where that handle is at and not to have to search around for it, not having it in some really assed up position that you've got to try to twist your hand around because you might be sliding on your side or you're sliding on your roof. You need to be able to just reach over, smack this thing forward. So on a single frame rail car, we put it up here, a double frame rail car without a delay box. We'll put it over here on the top of the uh, double frame rail so you just have to push it forward. But either way, it's here or here. Either way, it's going to be in that easy spot to get to where you don't have to look at it. Slide your hand up, push it forward, try to get the car stopped. And if you look back at some of our other videos, we, uh, we had a maintenance uh, video on these fire bottle cables and how not to neglect them and once a year pull them out and, and service the cable and anti-seize it up because, you know, the last thing you want to do is need to use your fire bottles reach over and grab this and the cables are locked up because they've been setting for five years and they're all corroded up inside and now you can't actuate the fire bottles because the the cables are locked inside there so maintenance on this is critical this is something that should not be neglected and it doesn't get used that often so it's easy to neglect it and not maintenance those handles or, or cables so um, that's it for tonight we've kind of caught up to where we've got everything mounted and uh, uh, I'll catch up with you on the next video.